This is CounterPoint, and I'm your host, Tanya Grenick allen The federal Liberal Party of Canada seems to dominate the news headlines of late. There is talk of candidates frustrated with the party brand, potentially tarnished by its leader Trudeau, his policies and, of course, his governance style. Recent polling seems to reflect this dismal news, with polling by Leger revealing voter intention. The Conservative Party of Canada maintains its lead with 45% of the vote nationally, followed by the Liberal Party at 25%, and the NDP at 15 Liberal candidates and MPs are wondering if they stand a chance in the next election, which is due in the fall of 2025. And now, with the end of the NDP-Liberal agreement, what will the future of the Liberal-led government be? Well, joining me now to share his insights is Andrew Perez, a Liberal strategist and principal at Perez Strategies. Andrew, thank you so much for joining me today. So let's dive right in. What is the current landscape for the Liberal Party of Canada? It, it's a very dire one, Tanya. Uh, really, over the past 18 months, uh, the government has struggled to gain traction uh, in public opinion and also in communicating its uh, its agenda. Uh, there was a major cabinet overhaul in July of 2023, uh, well over a year ago. That was the first attempt to really uh, change the dial. And, and, and in hindsight, that major cabinet shuffle had zero impact. Um, and so the party really since then is really struggling to gain traction. And we're not talking about a government uh, eight or nine points uh, behind in public opinion. We're talking about a party and a government that's consistently been 15 to 20 points behind uh, the Conservatives, led by Pierre Poilievre, who are so well out ahead uh, that, you know, it's virtually a foregone conclusion that they will form a majority government. And that's pretty, pretty and unprecedented in Canadian politics. Uh, yes, governments by the nine year mark where Trudeau is today do tend to become long in the tooth. Um, but to to be uh, behind by double digits by such a long period, and regardless of what the prime minister, the cabinet, and liberal strategists, regardless of what they cook up in terms of strategy to ch to change to change the dial, nothing appears to be working. Well, well let's go back to twenty fifteen because you, your I, your point has taken well that uh, you know by the nine year or the ten year itch, if you will, people want change. It's a kind of almost a natural cycle in politics. And I remember when Prime Minister Stephen Harper was the PM that, um, you know, he thought he would get that coveted 10th year and, and so on and so forth. And there was voter fatigue and they said, you know what, we want change. Is this just a, a symptom of that? Is this just the natural cycle that we're seeing that maybe people want change and, you know, they're ready for something new? I think that's part of it. I think there's no... There's no clear explanation here as to why the party, there's no one factor. Um, the the nine year mark is certainly a factor. Um, you know, at some point, Canadians, people just get sick of looking at your face. And I think Trudeau has certainly reached that point in time. But I think while I give the government credit for generally managing the COVID-19 pandemic well, I think emerging from that pandemic, the government did win its third mandate, albeit a minority, exactly three years ago in, uh, in, in September of 2021, it really went all downhill from there. I think there's a myriad of political and public policy reasons as to why. I think the affordability crisis is probably the number one factor. Uh, we saw unprecedented inflation, rising interest rates, a housing affordability crisis uh, that, that has been just awful for my generation, the millennial generation, but also Generation Z. And so the confluence of those factors Coming out of COVID, when the electorate and the Canadian people were already very cranky, we saw uh, divisions in society heightened. Um, Prime Minister Trudeau was part of, of sowing those divisions, as, as was Pierre Poilievre coming out of the Freedom Convoy. And so I really think that the last two or three years have divided this country uh, more than any other time in my adult lifetime. And um, unfortunately for the Liberals, that has that has led to, uh, you know, a great loss of support for the party and the government. At this point, and, I, and I've been open about this, I'm a longtime Liberal. I remain in the Liberal Party in spite of my criticism of the Prime Minister and the government. But I want to see the Liberal Party... Uh, 
form official opposition in the next election, like Harper did 10 years ago. He he lost his majority government, but he came out with uh, about 99 seats uh, and, and the party was able to rebuild. Right now, the Liberal Party is at risk of, of coming in third place. Some polls are even suggesting fourth place in okay, seat I'm going to pause you there. We'll be right back.